What's up everybody, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we're doing Double Time, which is in Halo 3 ODST, beat the par time on Coastal Highway. So this is the last level, aside from Epilogue, which doesn't count because it's just a cutscene. Uh, so you will get, if this is your last par time that you're doing, you will get the next achievement for all of the par times in ODST, which is Can't Stop Here, This is Brute Country. So hopefully you have all of those previous ones covered by now. If not, check out my channel, I got them all up here. Uh, but in the first part of this whole level, we're just going to run right through the middle. It's on easy. You can do it on any difficulty. Easy makes it the quickest and most efficient way, obviously. All the enemies are terrible at killing you, which is kind of their main objective. So kind of odd that they're terrible at it. But we'll take it. Just run right through the middle, head to this doorway over here, and it will go to a cutscene. But not before Virgil comes over here and helps us open up the door. Of course. He's got those magic hands. So I just like to wait for him here. Dare and Buck come through first, and then Virgil coming up the rear. And get him to come in the door, and I like to give him a little push, because he floats forward a little slowly. So you can get him forward a little bit quicker by pushing him. But obviously it's not a huge time saver, but why not? Why not do it instead of just standing over here staring at the door? So now we could stare at the door. Just so we could be here right when it's available to open, so we could cue the cutscene as soon as possible. And now we are on the highway, we skip the cutscene, jump into the hog, and Buck is in your gunner seat to start. Hopefully, one time he was actually not in it for some reason to start, but... Uh, normally I go around to the left, but I decided to mix things up a little bit. I'm going through the middle here. It just pops you out on the other side of the highway. And there's a bunch of grunts here. You want to focus on that fuel rod grunt who just shot me in the side. Not cool. I was trying to run him over. It's probably best if I tried to not do that and I just allow Buck to kill him at will. But just drive back and forth. Uh, they should all be freaking out for the most part. Um, avoid any sticks, obviously. Sometimes the grunts will try to throw a plasma grenade at you and you want to not get stuck by that because it could kill you. And then you got to go back to your last checkpoint and you lose some time. I only died once in this and it's because I was being an idiot. Uh, I get a little jump happy later in this level and I get a little carried away, so... You'll see me start making some crazy uh, jumps off ramps uh, later on, and it's because I was just being stupid. The part time, I, did I mention this? I don't know. The part time is 25 minutes for this level. Uh, it's one of the longer, well, it is the longest level in ODST. And it's definitely the toughest one, but on easy, it's not really that tough. It's just long. So here we go. I'm moving through again, splattering enemies as I go. I know there's a brute on the right here. He pops out from behind that uh, car or whatever it is. And uh, I just try to splatter him. And I did not splatter him, but I took his shield down. But just want to drive in circles, pretty much. Almost got stuck there. That was close. Um, you want to try to avoid going off ramps, unlike I will start doing. Oh, God. Get out of my warthog, sir. The guy just ripped me out. This is not Grand Theft Auto, Brute. He must be playing a different game. You are in Halo. You are not Grand Theft Auto. Come on. Alright. Next section. This section, there's five sniper towers. There's only two that are occupied, though, and they're occupied by fuel rod grunts. So you want to kind of get away from them. Uh, they're always in different uh, sniper towers. They're not always in the same one. So, whoa, that was not intentional. That's what could happen if you go over ramps. So, you know, just try to not do that. I was trying to squeeze by the car there, but I actually... Went off it like a ramp. So I'm just, you don't have to do this. I'm just kind of being stupid. I'm trying to kill the fuel rod grunts in that third turret back there. They're very far away. I end up not killing them. Spoiler alert. Uh, but a lot of this is just waiting for Veronica to drive the garbage truck over to here. Because we're on a warthog, so we're going by pretty quickly. So a lot of the times you'll be waiting for her and Virgil to drive up in the garbage can or garbage truck. You cannot drive a garbage can. Unless you make, uh, make like a, some kind of derby racing car out of a garbage can. Like in, uh, the Little Rascals or something. They don't actually use a garbage can, but I could see someone, some group of kids, you know, making, uh, the body of a, a derby car like that out of a garbage can. I could see it in my mind's eye. But anyway, I guess that could be the Blur 3. But that whole section is full of buggers, and you just kind of want to circle around. And by doing that, you'll avoid most of their shots. You can see they didn't really shoot me that much at all. So 
I wasn't really in danger of losing any health at all, let alone my shield. So at this part of the highway, I like to drive all the way down and then cut back and try to splatter as many people as I can as they jump out of their phantoms. Uh, at least try to aim for the brute. Hopefully I'll kill multiple people uh, all at once, but because they jump down in a cluster for the most part. But uh, I killed the brute, so that's uh, the big bad guy. So that tends to get all the grunts to freak out. So And then Buck tends to wipe them up pretty easily. So we're at this section. This section is uh, occupied by a bunch of ghosts, which is not cool. You probably want to bail, because ghosts could, uh, even on easy, do a good number on you. Uh, I didn't realize at first, I've never played this level on easy until now, but I didn't realize that all of these ghosts are actually occupied by grunts on easy instead of brutes, so they're much easier to take out. Buck takes them out pretty quickly. Obviously, grunts have less health, and they don't have any shields compared to brutes. So I'm just kind of standing here. And if you just park it here, Buck will continue to shoot him. And since you're not in the Warthog, when the ghosts shoot the Warthog, you're not taking any damage. So that is a good way. Even on uh, even on Legendary, that's a good way to do it. Obviously, you probably want to hide a little bit more on Legendary. Because I was just kind of standing on the Warthog right in the open. But here is the Goss Hog after that section. I get in the passenger seat, and that gets Buck to get in the back seat. If you get in the driver's seat, he'll probably get in the Goss Hog. Um, but sometimes he'll hop in the passenger seat, which is really annoying, and then you gotta hop out, get him to get out, and move, and all that crap. So I just get in the passenger seat real quick, and he hops in the back, and then I hop in the driver's seat. So this is pretty fun. I mean, this whole level's pretty fun on easy. Because you're just destroying everybody pretty much. But now you're in a Goss Hog, so you're destroying people even more. It's like beating up on tiny, tiny children, and you're a large ODST. I mean, what are the grunts? You can't really think of the grunts as adults. They're, they just seem like children. They have those high-pitched voices. They're tiny. They both suck on food nipples, so that's another thing. The comparisons are just incalculable. There's so many. That's probably where they all end, though, actually. There's probably only those three similarities. Uh, they're alive. I was about to say they both breathe air, but they don't. Uh, grunts breathe methane, and humans breathe oxygen, along with some other nonsense. We actually only breathe, like, 20% oxygen or something like that. The atmosphere is mostly nitrogen. Uh, this is now a science channel. I'm slowly transitioning over to science and away from Halo. Halo is now just a vessel for me to talk to you about science facts and uh, teach you about the Earth and the universe. And uh, that's not true at all. But I will throw in some, uh, some fun facts. You're getting a grade A education here by watching this video. So this section obviously has the Wraith. The only Wraith you have to fight in this whole level. So you kind of want to steer clear of him because obviously he has the big wraith bomb he could fire at you so you want to keep moving so he doesn't just uh, you know fire at you while you're standing still you pretty much just want to keep moving all the time just in case a random uh, enemy decides to throw a grenade at you and stick you and kill you so we're past the section with the wraith now we're in a big scorpion I'm having a I'm torn here you could see I'm having a dilemma of sorts I was like let me get in the tank no, I, I think I want to stay in the Goss Hog. No, I'll get in the tank. So that's what that was, that hopping out and back in and out and back in whole thing was. Buck hops in your turret, unless he has a better weapon. Sometimes he'll hop on your one of your sides if he has rockets or a fuel rod, but it doesn't really matter in easy on this level. Shoot that uh, shade turret. I'm trying to take out this phantom, which is totally unnecessary. You don't need to do this at all. I actually waste a little bit of time here, I think, just by killing him or not killing him I'm like yeah that'll totally get him I thought that was gonna be the last shot so I was kind of cocky and slow playing him playing with my food and you know just ran away not cool so up here is an anti-air wraith so I lied about that last wraith being the last one I guess it was the last normal wraith this is an anti-air wraith just blow him up it takes three shots I believe on easy and you could just ignore these banshees pretty much um, they're pretty tough, for me at least, to shoot, unless they're diving straight at me. When they're running around, they're kind of tough to lead the target. So you could just kind of ignore them, actually. They're not going to really do any damage. There is a shade turret right here as well on this side, much like the first side. And uh, you do probably want to take them out. I take it back uh, once you get closer, just because of the fact that they tend to follow you if you just blow through here. 
So that's not cool. Like, you can see this one's diving at me, and he'll come into this tunnel that I'm in and follow me into the next section. So once you're over here, turn to the right immediately, and there will be four phantoms that come over this little rise. I would call it a hill, but it's totally man-made and not a hill. Uh, you want to aim for the... Uh, they look like eyeballs, kind of, but they're the engines on the front of the phantom. That's its weakest point. So you want to try to shoot those out. You can see... When I do shoot them out, they uh, they dim, so they the lights on them kind of burst, and they are no longer vibrant and glowing. So I'm not making that great of a uh, time here in regards to killing these phantoms quickly, but you could definitely keep moving along and shooting at them as they go. I did a better job on this uh, when I was going through my laser run, surprisingly. Or my not my laser run, but my par score run. I was able to kill them when they had more health, and that's just silly. I was able to kill them quicker with more health, which is silly. Of course you could kill them if they have more health, you just shoot them more. But you can see I killed all four phantoms. That's not 100% necessary, and actually I may have wasted a little bit of time doing that because of the fact that Veronica and the engineer and the garbage truck are all up here waiting for me to go to the next section. So I kind of wasted a little bit of time there. The reason I did take out those phantoms was because of the fact that if you don't take out any, those phantoms actually drop off the ghosts they were carrying in this section. So by taking them out before they even land over here, we don't have to deal with them. But since it's on easy, we could probably just take them out over here. Uh, since, you know, that's really easy to take them out. Because they're just ghosts on easy. And we're in a tank. So you probably do want to just keep moving. You could shoot a couple phantoms out while you're moving. Uh, but don't stop. Now that I'm looking at this. I'm just watching Dare drive. Uh you know, just straight through cars. You could try to make an effort to, you know, minimize the damage you're doing, but okay. You could just drive straight through. That's fine. Nope. Oh, there was some dude sleeping in there. He was just, you know, pulled over to the side of the road, taking a nap while the Covenant glasses the planet, and you just totally railed right into him. Real nice. My god. Uh, this next section, pretty easy. It's all infantry, and you're in a tank. So, I mean, you know, think about it. Obviously, you still don't want to get too close to these enemies because they could throw grenades at you. There is also a war chieftain on the other end, which is uh, one brute that carries a fuel rod gun. So you don't want to get too close to him, and you want to make him a priority when he uh, makes his appearance. You'll probably see him back there already. But there's all those brutes up ahead. So there you can see he's starting to fire at me, that war chieftain dude. Not cool, dude. I mean, obviously I was going to, you know, fire at you with this gigantic tank, but I guess you started it. I'm glad you fired the first shot, so now it's not my fault. I mean, I was just going to totally destroy you anyway, but whatever. All right, moving to the next section. Moving to the next section. Uh, this actually has no enemies in here. There's nobody in these sniper turrets, I'm just killing them for fun. I'm going to skip ahead in a second, but I'm just showing you that there's a warthog you could get in here. And it actually makes the next section a little bit quicker because you could drive there uh, more quickly in a Warthog. So hop out of the tank, grab the Warthog, and this whole section is scripted. So I'm going to skip ahead because the Scarab gets out and shoots at Veronica and there's a little dialogue there. So I'll skip that. There's no enemies in here anyway. So I skipped ahead like 45 seconds-ish to this part where the door's open. And now we're going to go down here. There's no enemies here either until we turn to the right. And this is the last section, aptly named Last Exit or the firefight map version of this. And there are no enemies in here either, except for two sleeping grunts up ahead towards the building, kind of in this, uh, where these pillars are up here. And they will be sleeping. There's two of them. They are in different places every time. So they decided to both be up against this column this time. And uh, we're just going to give our rockets to Dare. I should actually have given these rockets to Buck and then given these rockets in here to dare. There's rockets in the uh, the crate I just passed. This guy's just chilling, hanging out. Kind of an awkward way to cross your legs casually uh, while you're sitting on a park bench, but whatever. So I give these rockets to Buck. I should have given those rockets to Buck before I picked up this ammo, but unfortunately uh, I did not do that, and now I can only give rockets to Buck instead of Buck and Dare. So, we're just going to set ourselves up here, and like I said, this is the last section, but there are a few waves of phantoms with infantry that we gotta fight off first. 
So hop on your stallion over here. Nah, just kidding. You don't have to touch those golden horses. I wonder if there's someone who's, like, afraid of golden horses. Like a phobia of some kind. Golden zebra. It's clearly a zebra. I just call them horses. Here comes the first phantom, though. Just standing on my horse. Acting like I'm part of the cavalry. And you can start shooting all the grunts. Watch out, though. You can see that fuel rod starting to get shot at me. Or towards me, at least. There is a fuel rod brute over there. He's just a captain, though. He's not a war chieftain. So start picking off these grunts while being aware of where the fuel rod brute is. Because, obviously, he could take you out very quickly if you're not paying attention to him. And we have a plasma pistol that I picked off of one of the dead grunts that were just sleeping here to begin with. So I can noob these brutes and headshot them. And obviously just headshot the grunts. And it's pretty straightforward if you know what to do and where to get ammo and stuff. You could obviously stick some brutes. I don't have any sticky grenades at this point though. Decided to throw a regular frag grenade. Buck actually is doing a pretty good job this run through of killing people with his rockets. So I killed the fuel rod guy, so I'm going to grab this fuel rod and give it to Dare. So she could actually do some good work against the Covenant, because she's not really doing much with that pistol. And I realize she has a pistol, I have a pistol, so she can't switch out for my fuel rod, because I can't have two pistols. So I'm going to find another weapon right now. First one I find, it's a mauler. I kind of want to use the mauler. I missed the mauler. I would like for it to be in more Halo games. So right now I have a mauler and a pistol, not because I want a mauler, strategically. I do always want a mauler, just, you know because it's awesome, but not really going to do much with the mauler. At this point, I'm just kind of shooting as many jackals as I can. This is a whole wave of jackals. They have carbines, they have just the regular, you know, shields and a plasma pistol, and some of them have the beam rifles as well, so you want to watch out for them. The ones with the beam rifles tend to go back there on the left. I'm shooting at two of them right now, and they also tend to go up in the same section, but on the right as well. Fortunately, Someone killed the beam rifles that went to the right. Because they're not over there. So at this point, I'm going to go up here. There's a bunch of sniper ammo. There's a bunch of health up here too, but I don't really need health. But there's health up here, and there's health down in the room with the engineer, if you need that ever. Uh, but there's a bunch of sniper rifle ammo up here, so I'm just filling up on that. And there's two hunters that were dropped off just recently as well. And it looks like... Buck and Dare did a really good job killing them quickly. I didn't even see them alive, so that's awesome. And now we have one last Phantom to take out. And it is going to release a bunch of Brutes. And some are just regular Brutes, and some are Jetpack Brutes. And there's also a Brute Chieftain with a Gravity Hammer. Don't do what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of exploring the map. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I can get up here. And I can. And it uh, looks like I should be able to get in there, but I can't. Seems like that's an area where I should be allowed to be. But, whatever. Enough distractions. We're going for the part-time here. And I'm just, you know, dilly-dallying in the corner here, like an idiot. But one shot will take out the shields of a brute on easy. And then you can just shoot him one more time for the body shot to kill him. So you don't even have to aim for the head. If you do aim for the head, one shot to the head will kill him, even when they have full shields. This chieftain... Whoa, man. It's easy to sidestep. I'm sure a lot of you have seen my guides or other people's guides where you can just sidestep the Brute Chieftain. When he does that move, just sidestep to the left, wrap around him, and assassinate him for the easy kill. And now we just have regular Brutes to deal with. Two shots is all it takes to kill him. And I think that's it. Just waiting for uh, Mickey and Dutch and Romeo to come in with their Phantom. And I thought that guy was alive for a second, but he's just a corpse propped up against one of these uh, cement pillars here. Whatever these are. They look like trash cans or lights. They look like lights. They're too tall to be trash cans. Be like freaking NBA players slam dunking. Oh, there's more brutes. Forgot about those. Um, well, I didn't really forget. I just didn't see them. So check over here, apparently, because sometimes uh, some brutes like to congregate over there without you knowing. And now, here we go. Here come the ODST friends of ours. To take out these wraiths and then they're going to fly over here right where I am right now. And they will pick us up and that will cue the end. Just waiting for that. Oh my god, look at this guy. Realistic flying tiger. And his panda friend. There are so many realistic flying tigers. They're like clones. 
Look at this guy. That guy looks so suave in that photo. He's just like, what up? And his panda friend, eating some bamboo, but it looks like he's just playing a flute of some kind. Look at those woodwind skills he has. Or I guess you could call it brass skills, depending on what your wind instrument is made out of. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Click like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you later for more achievements.